Welcome to our lecture online. Here we have the very same problem that we did in the previous video with one difference is that now there's friction between M2 and the tabletop. So how does that change things when we look at the whole system at once? Notice that everything is connected. We do not look at T1 or T2. That is, those are internal forces. We only have three forces controlling the acceleration. The force in the acceleration and the two forces opposing the acceleration. In this case, the friction force and the weight of M1. So the acceleration now is the net force divided by the total mass, which is the force aiding the acceleration minus the two forces opposing the acceleration divided by the total mass. And when we factor out a G, we get an expression for the acceleration. Very straightforward. How do we do this now when we have the three masses separate? We draw, we draw three free body diagrams, and now we have three equations for each of the three F equals MA equations for each of the three masses. For the first mass, we have the tension aiding the acceleration minus the weight opposing the acceleration. For the second mass, we have the tension pulling to the right, T2 aiding the acceleration, T1 opposing the acceleration, and the friction force also opposing the acceleration. And for the third mass, we have the weight aiding the acceleration and the tension opposing the acceleration. Notice that for the first mass, the acceleration is upward, for the second mass, it's to the right, and for the third mass, it's downward. But notice we now have three equations and three unknowns, T1, T2, and the acceleration that we're looking for. So we have to eliminate both of the tensions. We'll start with taking the third equation and solving this equation for T2. So we end up with T2 is equal to, when we bring it to the right, is equal to M3G minus, when we bring this to the left, M3A. So here we now have an equation where we have T2 in terms of things that are known. Well, not quite because we don't know the acceleration yet, but at least we're trying to get rid of T2. And we're going to plug that into this equation right here. So T2 will be plugged in right there. When we do, we get the following. We get M3G minus M3A minus T1 minus M2G mu equals M2A. And so now we take this equation right here, and we take this equation. Now we have these two equations with just T1 and A. Now we can solve those two equations for T1, and then set them equal to each other to eliminate T1. So on the first equation, we end up with T1 is equal to M1A plus M1G. For the second equation, we move this to the right, we move this to the left, and switch the equation around. So we get T1 is equal to M3G minus M3A minus M2G mu equals Oh, not, not equals because we have an equal sign right there. But move this over to the left side. This becomes minus M2A. And so here's our second equation. We'll box it in in terms of T1. Now we can set the two equal to each other and we'll get the following. We get M1A plus M1G is equal to, on the right side, M3G minus M3A minus M2 G mu and minus M2 A. And now we're going to move all the terms that have an A in it to the left, everything else to the right. So that gives us an M1 A plus M2 A plus M3 A equals, because when we move those over, they become positive, equals on the right side, we have an M3 G minus an M1 G and minus an M2 G times mu. Now we can factor out an A on one side and a G on the other side. So we have A times multiply times G. And then if we divide both sides by M1 plus M2 plus M3, then we get the following. We get A is equal to plus M3. And that should be exactly the same that we got on this side, and it sure looks like that. So we got the exact same equation. So now when we want to plug in the numbers to get the real value for the acceleration, we see that acceleration is equal to M3, which is 15, minus M1, which is 5, minus M2, which is 10 times 0 0.2, all times G, 
divided by the sum of the masses, 5 plus 10 plus 15. And so A is equal to 15 minus 5, which is 10, minus 2, which is 8 times G. So 8G divided by 30. And so A is equal to 8 divided by 30 times 9.8. And we get 2.61. 2.61 meters per second squared. Now that we have some friction on block two, the acceleration is a little bit less than it was in the previous video. But again, the most important part is, you can see that there's two methods to solve for the acceleration. One where we only consider forces act on the whole system. One where we look at all of the three body diagrams. In this case, there's three, and therefore we end up with three equations and three unknowns. So a little bit more work to get to the final answer. And that's how it's done.